welcome to a slightly different video to what we do usually. We get asked a lot about how we take photos of our cars because that's kind of all we do aside from film them. We've been putting a lot of importance into the photos we've taken, been having a lot of fun with it as well. We thought we'd sort of make a video of us just trying some new stuff out that we'd never tried before in terms of photography, which was shooting at night and sort of doing some longer exposures of our cars and stuff like that. I had done it once before this, but still kind of minimal experience and we are by no means professionals. We're just doing this for fun. So we're gonna assess the photos we take in the video. Got my laptop here. We're gonna watch all the footage and we're gonna see how they come out. I know for a fact that some are quite cool, some yeah. quite Yeah. We'll talk about why. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully it's a bit of fun. So what we actually do shoot on is Olympuses pretty much exclusively for our film stuff. So I shoot on an OM2N. This is a kind of a new camera for me. I used to shoot on an OM1. Matt shoots on an OM10. So for this video, I didn't have my OM10 on me because it had film in it that I really love to shoot at daytime. And so I put some Portrait 800 into a Ryko that my dad actually gave me that he used to shoot when he was about my age, which is pretty cool. So that's what we shoot in this video exclusively. We thought it'd just be easy to put Portrait 800 in it. So 800 meaning ISO, which suits the nighttime photography. A lot of people ask what film we use. That's one of our favorites. Uh, another favorite is Ektar 100. As a small <laughs> pointer, just try different films. It's fun ass. Yeah, that's all we've been doing. We don't know like what's good, what's bad. We just kind of shoot different films in different scenarios and experiment and that's kind of the fun of it because you get so much personality out of the film itself that yeah. sometimes it's like cheating, but sometimes like when you figure out what it does, then that's like when everything comes together perfectly, that's when you get that really beautiful photo. And you yeah. can kind of see that sometimes in this video where the Portrait 800 really works. Mm. So let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, this is our first spot. It might look like a McDonald's car park slash drive through. And that's but... because it is. <laughs> okay, we're gonna chuck the car in the waiting bay there. This is a really nice, really modern designed Maccas here. This is like no ordinary Maccas. This, like fancy... this one of them fancy Maccas. Um, but yeah, often in night shots, getting like a background light is really important. So we're gonna give it a go. So how I figure out what shutter speed I want at night is that I have this app and it's just called Light Meter Free. And so I go on my camera and I kind of tap where I'm gonna shoot. I tell it what the ISO of the film is, I tell it what f-stop that I want, and I figured out that this is about two stops off. So if I'm gonna shoot at f8, I'm gonna tell it that I'm at 16. So I'm probably gonna have to do about a one second exposure, which I can actually set on auto, which is neat. Usually I have to have my little extension onto here and I do like two or three seconds, but it just says one second, so I might give that a go. Alrighty, here we go. The first pick came out terribly. <laughs> it was super blurry, and the reason was I didn't have my little clicker. And so I pressed the shutter with my finger, that knocks the camera, game over. Yeah, it's essential really when you're doing those longer exposures to have the button that you press that's off the camera. You can put it on a self timer though, we didn't think of that. <laughs> So the second shot actually came out the way that we wanted the first shot to come out. Yeah, it came out awesome. So now you see what we mean when we say that when we like, I feel like it's, it really like soaks the color into the film when you sit it there for like a whole second. And a yeah. whole second really isn't that long because mm. that's actually quite a bright little scene. Mm. And all of the colors are just like super vibrant. You can still kind of see that greeny yellow coming through with the portrait. Yeah. All Alright, so the second spot we went to was a car wash where we actually did our t-shirt photo shoot with our friend Tom Blanche. But the annoying part is, is that the audio on our camera didn't work for that tiny portion of the video, which is frustrating, but yeah. it looks sick. Yeah, it's a good like, photo. We thought the first shot was going to come out like kind of lame because all the lights in the background were like pretty white and really aggressive. It came out way better than I thought. Yeah, it came out really, really good. Yeah. The next shot we are shooting is a little further away. Yeah, so I can't even get the whole car in this shot from here. You're not even gonna be able, you can like barely see the car. <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, that'll show how long a 300mm lens is actually. Yes. And hopefully my camera can cope with the distance. I've never actually done this with such Yeah, that's a, a good point. I was just about to ask, like, how you But you actually just tap. tap. An area of the it. frame. Yeah. It still says 1.6. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you've, it's the same thing that yeah. you're exposing for, essentially. I'm going to trust it. The hardest thing with this is getting focused. Yeah, this up lens. so far away. Yeah, it's dark and this lens doesn't have a great focus, but um, yeah. you know what? We're going to give it a shot. Gonna so we'll it. try and count one and a half seconds. Zero, one. 
This shot was one of the first night shots that I shot on that big 300mm lens, and that thing is a battle to focus with. Yeah, even at the best of times. Yeah, and so in the dark it was impossible, and I mean the shot was like, kind of framed okay, it's like still... I don't know, I don't think it'd be a super great shot anyway. Um, I couldn't really get far, far enough away, but... Yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't focus, so it's all blurry. Yeah, it does kind of have a little bit of a 70s glow to it, which is kind of a vibe, but yeah. the background there with the sort of kitchenette kind it's of... not sick. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> ugly, and especially the sort of COVID-19 related posters up there. It's not really much of a vibe. <laughs> We're two from four so far. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> that's pretty sh... <laughs> that's a passing grade. Right, we've got a shot here that we think is probably going to be trash. You also can't see the car. It's over here. Hello. We really don't know what to expect with this one. I've never shot something in such low light. But this will be cool to show just how long we yeah. might have to expose it for. And a lot of the time when people ask us like how to shoot film, just like I don't simplest know. Simplest is like watch videos. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that help you shoot film. And like this just one. Experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is a little handy tech tip, a Linus tech tip if uh, you're into it, if it's really dark, get your buddy to go and shine a light on something so you can try and focus on it. Too bad you don't have any buddies, hey? Two and a half seconds. Two and a half seconds. Yeah, so let's, um, let's see what it do. I'm going to make sure I can see what I'm doing. Alrighty. So let's send it. Two and a half seconds in my head. Do it. Yeah, as we said in the video, we thought this was going to be pure trash because we never shot in light that low. Mm. But I guess pretty cool. Yeah, it turned out cool. And the lights going by behind the car. Yeah, looks sick. And we like yeah. sat there for ages trying to avoid that. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that looks kind of sick. Like yeah. it's. I think it was a bit darker than that. I definitely boosted it up when I edited it, and it's like still flat. It's not great, but yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's got a cool vibe to it. It's got a, some of that orange and and the red sort of from the mm. shell background. Um, yeah, that you get actually just onto the wheels as a bit of a reflection, which is cool. Yeah, that's sick. Actually, when we shot this, this weird ass dude just came up to us and yeah. started being like. Can I buy it? Yeah, you offered like, to buy my car after like five seconds prior acknowledging the fact that he didn't know what it was. So that was weird. And then he sat and just like stared at us for a fair while and looked at us taking all of the next few photos as well. It was pretty strange. Yeah, so <laughs> be prepared for weird encounters when you take photos of shit for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. People just come up, they're like, what you doing? Yeah. Taking photos? Oh, why? <laughs> I like the car. The world's beautiful, man. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> All right, this shot looks like a bit more of a vibe. Nice ambient light. In and it's not just like pale, like fluorescent light as well. Yeah. Wants a bit of red, bit of yellow, especially with the red car. Like if it was a white car, we might get, we might have gotten some of that green and stuff off the, off the signs over there. But the red car is not really going to bounce that so well. A one second exposure, which I can do on the camera. Send it. So I don't necessarily need this guy. So I won't need to retract it. Alright, so this pic came out kind of the way we were looking for the photos to come out. It's got like that sick reflective light coming off the signage like right on the left. Like the ground is super green and yeah again like this is kind of what portrait looks like at night which is mint. So yeah. if you want that, that's why it looks like that. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool that the car wash in the background gets that sort of green and everything to mm. it and it's still really nice and crisp. I'm gonna do a really wide open aperture here because I just want a bit of depth and I don't usually get depth in my night shots. And I think from the front it's really easy to do because it doesn't get mixed up. Like there's the front of the car and then there's the background, which yeah. is really nice. Yeah. And this is 120th. I can do 130th. So I might do that. And I probably could be, if I had really, really stable hands, I could probably shoot this with that one. But I don't. <laughs> Matt has the jitteriest hands of anybody I've ever seen. Yeah, legit. It's really bad. It's, it's like just he's had a million coffees every time. It's because I have. Alright. <laughs> so this shot was the first one where I used like a really wide open aperture. I think the lowest I can go on that camera is like uh, f2. Yeah. 
you can kind of see why I don't do that at night because it's hard to focus at night even though it should have been easy in a setting like this but I focused on like the no exit sign out the back because I'm a dumb dumb yeah and that shot could have been way cooler but mm. it wasn't <laughs> so yeah a bit of a risk shooting at a, at a low aperture yeah. though you are going to be able to shoot it handheld sometimes it's you know probably not going to turn out the best yeah as i said if you don't have mr coffee hands you can probably get away with shooting like one fiftieth yeah or so on like a 50 mil lens but yeah i can <laughs> yeah so that's why this didn't really turn out so well but oh well could have been better if it was like two three years ago and and everybody was just starting to shoot film and you know it was just was a novelty yeah. to have a film photo of your car then people would have eaten this photo Dude, up. us two or three years ago probably just yeah. would have been like oh cool it's on film yeah and but then, not anymore not anymore <laughs> My car is officially sitting in the front of this whole 7-Eleven, which we like to look up. Yeah, I've never really shot in anything super harsh like this, but I think it should look cool. Yeah. I've got a pretty narrow aperture. I've gone, gone back to f11, which I was shooting earlier, because um, we kind of want all of this 7-Eleven action happening, um, mm -hmm. which looks super good. Um, and before, it said 1 6th. So I'm on 1... I'll go to 1 8th on here. So again, I won't need to release this. Um, Alright, here we go. Well, this setting actually turned out really well. We were really happy with how these came out. We shot a couple of spots around there, which actually turned out really nicely. We're quite happy with them. I went back to like a narrow aperture for this and I'm really stoked I did that. Cause like all of the 7-Eleven signage is in focus and all of those colors are just like super bright. The red's super red. And yeah, this is pretty much exactly what I wanted them to look like. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of the last one, which we'll see in a second, which has some foreground, which I always like. I think I lowered the aperture maybe just a little bit, but mm. yeah, all of these shots are kind of similar, but we're stoked on all of them. Okay, um, I might go F4 on this one. On 40th, we'll do a slightly quicker shutter because obviously our aperture is wider open, so it's exposing more light. 101, photo taking. Let's do it. It's really cool how the sort of neon lighting that, that lights up the 7-Eleven frontage just is really getting that nice glow and the greens are getting pulled out of it in particular, so it's got this really sort of just, I don't know, melancholic glow to it, I think, which, yeah, yeah. Portra really shoots this stuff at night and and these sort of um, kind of lonely tones in a way, I guess. Like you really get that sort of yeah. you know, coming out of it in those in those really bright lights there. Especially the cute little car sitting in front of like this big Yeah, yeah. It gets that vibe sort of, big time. Yeah, it gets a bit of a sort of yeah, a bit of a comparison there. Okay, uh, we're here for the second part of our film photography video. And we're out here near Dylan's place. And my car is sitting across there and we're hoping that some of the background lights will look super cool. Um, we're going to do a couple more shots around here because it's like lots of shots. Nice coloured lights and not just like yeah. random bright white lights. So yeah. hopefully really cool. some cool colours on here. There's some nice like signs on this street here and, mm. and sort of up the way over there. Yeah. Um, so we'll sort of see if we can get some nice like yellows and reds bouncing off from yeah. the signage and stuff. Yeah. We've got our first shot lined up. We're actually on the other side of the street because the light is kind of reflecting the car. We only have to do like a half a second shot of here, so not super long. Um, so this will be our first shot of the night, and hopefully it comes out alright. Yeah. Now it's right. Well, this photo slaps. This, this photo rips. <laughs> this Definitely. photo is so sick. This is like the first one where I've successfully got proper foreground, like real good blur, like proper focus. And like the portrait colors are like proper nuclear. Yeah. Right? Like cool. everything is so green and like the car is orange looking. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, did yeah. I love it? It's a nice little nice little spot to frame in there. Just a, a lot of I know it's a cool spot. We yeah. actually use this for uh, the front page of our website. Yes, this is the front page of our website. Yeah. So now you see we just kinda like collect images as we go around and take photos for fun and they just kind of end up in places that you guys see them yeah which is funny <laughs> well that's just indicative of how much we like this photo as it is now yeah, yeah true page. true <laughs> i particularly like this photo because i've been more interested in taking photos of things that are not cars mm. and i think that this would be how someone would take a photo that wasn't taking a photo of the car specifically yeah like the car is the shot but 
if you were a car guy, yeah, you would kind of just go to the side and be like, here's the car. Mm, yeah. Which is, I think is why I like it a lot. It's a bit different. It's sort of, yeah, trying to be more photographer-y than yeah. being car guy I try. <laughs> yeah. I try. <laughs> So we got shot number two, we've always, we've been trying to get like the perfect interior steering wheel shot. So you can see how this will continue the quest because I will not nail it. <laughs> I'm at F 2.8 here, I don't want to get too hectic because it's night and it's a little bit harder to focus. So I could go to like F2, but I might miss that plane of the horn button here, but we'll see. Um, and we're at half a second shutter as well. So we're kind of on a good run here. Yeah. This photo is sick. It's not like quite as crisp mm. as I wanted, but the focus is still right. Yeah. The colors are still like what we expected. And yeah, that is kind of the photo we've been trying to get for ages. Yeah, well, we'd never actually tried shooting it with a tripod. I think it's one, one angle. That's true. <laughs> Additionally, we'd never, we'd always just sort of walked up and been like, yeah, let's try and take this photo. And then we yeah. hadn't got it. This and one, we thought a bit more about it. Yeah. So this one slaps. Yeah, this, this one's, one's so good. This one's sick. And we'll also put in one that we shot, well, that Matt shot a couple of weeks later. I think yeah, we'll was. show the difference. Might put them side to side. Even I yeah. shot one on Ektar and you can see the difference in the colors. I know it's night first day, literally, mm. but... Um, you get to see how red the red is on the Ektar, how orange it is on the portrait, like all of those things. Yeah. You see the difference. This is shot three. Like Matt said, we've got a bit of light coming from this joint over here, which is quite nice. This joint? Yeah, and um, we're across the road now, trying to get just like a direct side on, trying to get some of the light that's sort of bouncing off the roof here and off the bonnet and the windscreen. We don't have a polarizer on because we don't have one for this particular 50. But, um, annoying, but okay. we, we do kind of want the reflections. Um, it's kind of interesting in these scenarios, yeah. yeah. Um, and so again, this whole thing is two stops behind and for this one, this will be the first shot of the night where I'll probably shoot at like F8, I think. Yeah. So you... that way we can get the detail of the points behind. Yeah. Like usually in photography, you really don't want that, but at night I feel like it just like bright, like it makes yeah. it so vibrant. You, know? you don't want to just have all of that be like a blur, that'll be lame. Uh, I mean, well, how about we try both actually? Okay. okay, experiment. Yeah, let's do that. And we might do one like more underexposed than another and see, yeah. like, see what comes out like what. Doing this, I'd probably try overexposing it a little bit because the um, actual car, like the subject, is it's definitely the the shadow as opposed to the highlight. Yeah. So, um, we'll see. Yeah. And we're going to have to time it for when there's not a car coming past as well. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so let's see what we're working with here. Where am I? We're going to go for a second, one second shutter speed. I haven't had to use this properly yet, which is kind of a shame. But here we go. That one was with the, uh, the closed aperture, so F8, so everything will be in focus. And now we'll try one where the car is the only thing in focus, and we'll see which one turns out better. You're going to do the F2? Uh, maybe not as hectic. Although, why not? <laughs> Let's give it a go. Why not? <laughs> Biggest disparity. And that will change what our shutter speed is as well, so I'm going to have to check that. So about 112 it looks right, if I can get that on here. I think it'll only be 115. But that's good, that's a tiny bit underexposed, which at night is probably a good thing. And, uh, um, we might do one a little underexposed, maybe. Yeah. Do something a bit different. Or should we try one? I was going to I would have thought Stay let's over. try one overexposed. Yeah. Right, let's do that. We'll so do the exact like... same shot, but we'll just go, instead of 1 15th, we'll do 1 8th. Doesn't sound like a big difference, but it's like twice the time. Cool. Sick. Let's see the difference, hopefully. Um... So in this shot, we kind of tried to experiment a bit with like how we've actually been taking the photos because it's like such a simple, like simple little scene. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see there's three shots. I think the low aperture one kind of came out a bit like yeah, iffy. Bit, bit crap. The... Same as the others. Just yeah. like so hard to focus at night, but that's kind of okay. That's kind of like what we wanted to see if it was possible or not. Yeah, so shooting at that, uh, you know, low depth, of, small depth of field with the with the wider aperture, mm. so like a lower f-stop didn't end up turning out so good, but no. the, the smaller aperture, so the higher f-stop, actually did come out better. Yeah. And then the best, well, it's kind of a debate between longer exposure and the higher f-stop, um, which one's the best, but they those two did come out really nicely. Yeah, and I always thought, I was shooting this whole night thinking that I had to underexpose film because I thought it was easier to lift up the colors and to bring them back. But you can see with that third pick, or well, overexposing that red on my car looks so much better. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, and yeah. like the background doesn't really change that much. So I don't know if there's like this level where like light kind of seeps in and then 
and then stops. Yeah, diminishing I returns. I think that might be, yeah, I think that might be a part of the whole reciprocity failure thing, which we didn't speak about when we were shooting. And it's because you only really like need to pay attention to that when you're doing like way longer exposures than what I'm doing. And also, I'm just like not good enough to start yeah. calculating that at the same time. Basically, that's just the fact that the more the film gets exposed, the more you need to expose it. Yeah. So you can just so, find graphs for the film that you've got yeah. on the internet and kind of go from there. But yeah, the red on that last pick looks... Que bella. <laughs> Alright, so we found our second shot from the front. I'm going to do it at f2.8. Seems to come out really nice on this lens. Uh, we're going to kind of be quick because we're kind of in the middle of it. And we're doing a quarter of a second shot. Mitsubishi. What? Kind of looks like you got a Mitsubishi logo oh, in the middle dude, there. Oh, dude, it does. <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you looking at? <laughs> but this photo turned out pretty wicked. Yeah, this photo rips. This yeah. one kind of lines up with like that very first one we took through the plant, I reckon. Yeah. The colors look really similar, and I actually got, I think this might be like similar aperture to what I shot the first shot on. Um, and I actually got it right. Yeah. Which is sick. So this is kind of what I wanted that one at the petrol station to look like. Yeah. Like, just kind of have everything else in the blur, like, and just mm. keep the front plane like super crisp but yeah yeah man it looks so sick it's a good looking photo yeah <laughs> i need power steering so badly <laughs> i'm trying to back my car into a bob jane because the light looks awesome but i'm getting a mad workout at the same time <laughs> we're currently doing like a thousand point turn yeah oh i need to do it again to my arms are legitimately sore <laughs> Again, another close-up shot, which I think should look quite cool. I'm like really keen to see how the close-ups go at night, because I've never done it. And I'm, I think the combination between the portrait, like warm colors and the close-ups and like the greens and reds, and I really hope these are the better shots. So we'll um, set it down to 2.8. Get, get ourselves some blurry leaves. Blurry leaves, yeah. We want these leaves that are in the foreground to not be in focus. Um, so that they can just add a bit of contrast, a bit of depth, a bit of mood. Alright, so you know how I was talking all that sh being like, this one should look real good? <laughs> Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Well, that's the whole video. We did this because we had a lot of questions being asked about what we were shooting, yeah. what we were shooting on, what camera to use, X, Y, Z. We've answered most of those questions to those personal people, yes. but pretty much we just shoot on, yes, and Olympuses and, and this Ryko. But we're really happy with how a lot of these uh, photos came out. If you did like this video, you know, we, we are very able to do more of them. Yeah, we kind of want to do more. Like, this is, we shoot photos all the time. I smash through a roll of, like, 36 shots like almost once a week at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a pretty expensive hobby, so buy t-shirts. <laughs> once my car's running as well, it'll <laughs> we're going to be going ham sandwich on taking photos of the two yeah, of them together. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to be going crazy. And like, as we said, we're not professional photographers. We just do this for fun. I'm sure there's other film videos. I love to watch other film videos and film photographers. Um, I might put some links in the description of people that I've watched if you really want to learn. Um, that's They're kind of the people that I've learnt off. Um, I've only watched them like small amounts, so yeah, still don't know as much as I really want to know, but yeah, we're getting there. We are learning. Yeah. yeah. Our store is reopening on Monday. Yes. Uh, we got some new stuff. We got restock of old stuff. The store looks slightly different. Yeah. It's kind of cool. We've sort of just revamped some stuff. We've got some new exciting sort of avenues. Yes. Um, we're slowly heading in the direction that we want to head. Yeah. We've got sort of three directions we want to go <laughs> and we're able to start, you know, sort of moving those directions. So any support for that store is greatly appreciated and obviously it directly contributes yes. to making us make more content. We're going to start moving to one video every two weeks. We are finding that we're sort of rushing to get videos out with, you know, just a single or two days worth of work on our cars, which I don't think is particularly mm. ideal. I think we've agreed that we'd prefer to have a single video with more action happening. Yeah, we want to achieve more in every video. And me and Dylan, we work nine to five, Monday to Friday. So to have been putting out the weekly videos has been a real task for us to take all these photos and then for us to run the store, for us to design all the stuff for the store. Yeah. That's a lot of work and we're not afraid of hard work. We're definitely keen to continue that, but yeah. um, we just want the videos to be better. That's that's why we're doing that's it. So it's one, not because yeah. we're lazy. Yeah. We're probably still going to be filming as much. Yeah. We'll it's be, we'll... just that it's going to be jam-packed into a video with much more action, which yeah. I think is going to be better to watch. 
I know it's probably a bit of disappointing news that you're not going to be getting a video every week, but it does mean that the quality, I believe, will be a little higher, and it'll Hopefully. mean that I'll have a little bit of leeway to, you know, like, write some more music, put some more music in it, because yeah. I'm sure people are getting sick of the <laughs> same, like, five tracks that I put into every song. <laughs> I mean, every video, yeah. but... And for people that ask, Dylan writes all of those, which yeah. is pretty sick. We kind of, like, have our own domains, and we just kind of, like, go off and... Mm. Yeah, if you like videos this style, please comment, because we can make more. We can do it in different settings, do daylight, go down like the beach, do some pretty stuff, take some photos. It'd yeah. be sick. Um, but Dylan, you have to remind them not to forget. <laughs> they can't forget. Don't forget! Oh, God! You kind of made me yell again. Don't make me... Don't... Don't forget to hit the mother... The, the motherfucking <laughs> like button. I don't like Dylan when he's angry. Just hit it. <laughs>